Let's talk now to Dr Simon Bowers about the pressures on uh, the NHS, which there are a lot of pressures, and how technology can actually help. Hello, Simon. Hi, Pete. It is uh, a minefield, isn't it? The other day I mentioned that more and more doctors are trying to get out of the NHS and retire because they're in a terrible state, because it's not the job they signed up to. It's busy. It's very, very busy, and it's getting busier. We've got people living older than ever, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. What that brings with it, though, is people struggling to live independently and people living with more illnesses. And when those illnesses get the better of them, those people rely on on the National Health Service and and social care to look after them. And so, yeah, at times, on the front line, it does feel like we're running to standstill a little bit. Simon, are you working, Doctor? I am indeed. I'm a GP in South Liverpool. Mm -hmm. How difficult is it these days? It's tough. It's tough. I've been at my current practice in Egbert now for 12 years. And the job job was challenging when I came into it, but you still had just about enough time with each patient that you could make a significant difference. Whereas now, it, it's almost as if a tsunami of workload has, has descended upon us on the front line and you, you, you're holding back a tide completely. And, and the future is worrying. I mean, there's, there's, there's lights on the horizon in, in terms of some of the work that we can do in Liverpool to keep people well and some of the technology that's available to keep people independent. It's interesting you say that. I was also reading an article recently that pharmacists said if we could do more for the doctors, we could take a lot of pressure and save the NHS money. What do you think about that? I think there's a lot of validity to that, Pete. Yeah, I think that every day I see people who could be helped out by getting advice from other sources or even being taught to care for themselves. There's a, there's a real issue. Back in two or three generations ago when everybody had an auntie or a granny or a mother that knew everything, families looked after each other. Those families have, have, have changed in the way that they, they live their lives now and, and people are less resilient than they were. But yeah, the local pharmacist is an absolute fantastic source of good advice. The irony of all of this is, of course, we live in an era where we've all got instant access to information through the internet and the television and stuff every day. But not all of that in- information gives you the, the right stuff you need to keep yourself well. Now, technology is helping enormously. I uh, I've, I go private. Um, I've got private insurance. So I've got the uh, facility of ringing up a doctor 24 hours a day to help me if I need to be touch what I don't have to. Now, that's a part of technology that would never have existed years ago. I now get um, the chemist sending me a text saying your prescription's in. It's changing, isn't it? It certainly is, and you don't need to go private to benefit from some of the new the new technology really? that are available. Yeah, I mean, the, the good news for, for the NHS patients in Liverpool is that Liverpool now has more people than any other city in the country, more NHS patients benefiting from use of technology in their lives and in their homes. And it, it's about time too, Pete, because this is stuff that a lot of us take for granted in our lives, but, but it, it's only just starting to make a real difference in healthcare now. So give us some examples. Okay, so we've got, currently in the city, we've got more than 500 people who have a package, an electronic package in their house that helps to monitor their long-term condition. So that could be it checks their breathing, checks their oxygen levels if they've got a breathing disorder. It could be their blood sugar or their blood pressure if they've got diabetes or heart disease. And those, those readings are sent back electronically to our call centre, to our triage centre, where the NHS can look at them wow. and make an educated decision as to whether actually this patient is deteriorating, we need to get a health professional to their house quite quickly. And through that, you catch the part of the illness or the deterioration in the illness before the patient knows they're having it. So therefore, you can get to them, you can get treatment, into them and they don't end up in hospital. And Simon, that's I've got to interrupt you though. How long has that been going? Well, it's really gathered pace in the last kind of six months, but we've been rolling this out for two or three years now, Pete. Wow. I wonder how many of my listeners right now are aware of that. Pro- probably not so many because it's it's taken a wee while for us to for us to get going. But one of the reasons why I'm speaking to you now is now is the time where we want the people of Liverpool to to understand what's available to them, and we're rolling out more and different forms of this technology. So simple stuff. Within a few weeks' time, your GP will be able to book you onto a. a uh, a website, uh, a thing on their computer in the surgery that will text you regular reminders to take your blood pressure at home. You get a machine to take your blood pressure, you take it, you text the result back to the doctor. And at the end of 
whatever agreed period the union doctors have worked out, the doctor's got three or four weeks' worth of blood pressure and they can just make really, really educated decisions as to whether you need medication. Because if you've got high blood pressure, going on tablets, you tend to be on them for the rest of your life. So actually, this is a big decision for people. And now using simple, not even smartphone technology, this is just bog-standard mobile phone stuff, we're going to be able to, to help our patients care for themselves and look after their own health in a better way. Uh, I'm talking to Dr. Simon Bowers, who's making an awful lot of sense. The only thing that jumps to my mind there, Simon, is there will be listeners now saying, but I can't do that, I can't do this technology. There are people scared of it, aren't there? Of course there are, of course. And when you think about the stuff that we're putting in people's houses, this is going into houses of very vulnerable, often very elderly people who don't even have access to a flat screen telly yet. And so this is stuff that can plug into a big box telly. The controllers can be big, colourful red buttons that look a bit like they come from the 70s, but mm-hmm. they work superbly well with people who aren't native, who aren't used to using this technology. But if you think about widening it, Liverpool has the wear, one of the worst levels of admissions to Older Hay Hospital for children with uncontrolled asthma. Well, kids are so good at this technology. If we can get an asthma app onto every smartphone of every kid who's got asthma in Liverpool, then think of the potential benefits for picking up their disease before it goes off and gets more serious. Interesting you say that. I um, was involved with a campaign recently um, to try and stop smoking, which, as you know, is one of the major things that we really need to do. And I've got the NHS app on my phone, which I pretended I smoked 20 a day and put it into the app. And I've saved something like (laughs) £6,000 since I've given up. But that is helpful. If I'd have been a smoker, to see that amount of money, thinking what I could do with that money. So, yes, it is important, isn't it? It is absolutely, and part of part of what we need to do in this city to turn around the pressure that the NHS is under and make Scousers healthier as people is to get the right advice out of them. And you know what? It ain't rocket science, Pete. Simple stuff about physical activity. If you do half an hour's more physical activity a day, and that's not exercise, that's not going to the gym, that's just walking. You can manage that every single day. So get off the bus two steps early or leave the car at home a couple of days a week. Then your chance of developing cardiovascular disease, diabetes, or ending up in hospital is vastly reduced. So it's not the message that it used to be, that you can't enjoy your drink and you mustn't smoke and you've got to go to the gym and look like Stephen Gerrard. It's just stuff that everyday people can do every day that has a massive impact on your health. Now, you, you just reminded me, I did a video down at a thing called the Smart House at, um, at the Liverpool Museum. Yes. Um, is that still there? It is indeed, and, and what, what, what this is branded as in the NHS in Liverpool is more independent, MI, my, it tips off the tongue quite nicely. And the whole more independent thing is about these, these gizmos, these technological advances that patients can receive on the NHS, both from doctors, nurses and healthcare workers, and also from social workers and stuff. And the range of stuff that's available is all on display in the museum every day. It's free to see in this thing called the My Smart House. And as you know, Pete, because you've been down there, it's a fantastic thing to walk around. And the technology that's in there that's available now looks like stuff off the telly a lot of the time. It is incredible. I love the thumbprint to get into the house. Everybody loves that. Yeah. If you think about an elderly relative that you're concerned about that's starting to develop Alzheimer's or another form of dementia and keeps forgetting their keys, what a safer way to keep them safe than have their thumbprint and son and daughter or shopper or neighbour's thumbprint programmed into the door so we can always get somebody into the house to protect them and it doesn't matter if they forget the keys because they're safe. And the wonderful thing is people should actually go down to the museum and see this. First of all, it's a great museum if you've not been down. It's free of charge. So is the uh, smart house and they should look because they'll be shocked won't they 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 would and it's it's not just high-tech stuff there's a little plastic bath plug that stops you from flooding your house so it empties the bath when it reaches a certain pressure simple things like a one cup kettle we get a a number of admissions to hospital with older people who've burnt themselves with a kettle filling it too much and not being able to hold it so a single one cup kettle talking recipe books there's all kinds of stuff there and i suppose it's not just about this being some of this stuff being available on the NHS. This is stuff that worried families can mm. buy for their relatives through more independence if they go and see it at the smart house. I've got to ask you, because we were talking before about uh, walking, and, and I, I do, I swim. Um, and as you said, you don't have to go overboard, but you can do little things. I, 
if the stairs, take the stairs rather than the lift. Silly little things like that. What confuses me these days is cholesterol because whoever's in charge seems to be dropping and dropping and dropping. It used to be seven, now it's four and a half. I, I'm, I'm confused. If you don't have a cardiovascular disease, so if you've not been diagnosed with heart disease or an aneurysm or, or poor circulation, then the truth is there is no hard number target for your cholesterol. Right. Cholesterol is just one of the things that puts you at risk of heart disease. And what, what your doctor or nurse can do at your general practice as part of this thing called an NHS health check, which we're offering to everybody over 40, but if you're under 40 and you're worried, talk to your doctor and they'll be able to take you through it, is they take your cholesterol, your blood sugar, your height, your weight, your age, your sex, whether you smoke, what your family history is, and they stick it into a calculation and can give you a real clear understanding. So me, for example, I'm 39, and I like to think I'm not too overweight, I don't smoke, and I get semi-regular exercise, not as much as I'd like, and my cholesterol's very high because it runs in my family. My dad's cholesterol was 10, mine's 7.5, but actually my cardiovascular risk is really low. So I could go on tablets for the rest of my life to treat my cholesterol, but that's not what I want to treat. What I want to treat is my risk of having a heart attack, which is the second biggest killer of Scousers. Mm -hmm. So why have I been put on cholesterol tablets then? That will hopefully have been because an, an assessment was done of your overall cardiovascular risk, taking into account age, sex, height, weight, smoking status, and all those other risk factors. Nobody anymore should, unless the cholesterol is very, very high, because there are certain risk factors yeah, yeah. where your cholesterol is very high, if it runs in the family, where you should probably, over a certain age, go on a cholesterol tablet because there's good evidence for that. But in, in everybody else... And there's, I see tons of patients all the time who are in the mid-40s or early 50s. Cholesterol's a little bit dodgy. Blood pressure's a little bit dodgy. That's the kind of grey area where a good conversation with an experienced doctor or nurse can, can either reassure you or get you on the right drugs to bring your risk down. But my blood pressure's good. My cholesterol has been high-ish, but not high. It's sort of like sevens and... Six and a half and stuff like that, and I'm now on cholesterol tablets. Well, it might be worth just going back and making sure that calculation's been done because the, the thinking in this has only changed in the last two or three years, and I, I find patients all the time, and I can say to them, look, we can stop these tablets now. Right. I'm going to finish off with you now, by, and I'll always jump on this, especially at this time of year, the flu jab. How important is it? Massively, hugely. If you do one thing for yourself in a year, if you're over 65 or you have a medical condition that puts you at risk, or you're a child under five because we're now vaccinating them as well, or a pregnant woman, then if the only thing you go to your doctors for is to get stabbed for the flu, do it. Dr Simon Bowers, thank you for talking to us. Cheers, Pete. Talking to us. Cheers, Pete. Talking to us.